This is Anna here with another Compassion Works for All video. And this is a kid's video, but actually it's for all those who work with kids this time, but kids can listen too. This is our friend Debbie. We've seen her on some other videos. And what is wonderful about what Debbie does is she's a volunteer that goes into the public schools and I think that is one of the most wonderful programs that people can participate in. And what does she do in those schools? She works with children, and one of the things she does is help teach them to meditate and to be still and listen. So Debbie, tell us please a little more in your own words what you do to help with kids in meditation. So last year I was working in a first grade class where I'd worked with some of the children individually and then as a whole class reading to them. I'd just find different books at the library that I wanted to read to them. So I'd made a good connection with all the children. And I think that's such a key to make a connection with children, and I know teachers don't have that much time to make individual deeper connections, but if you could find volunteers to do that with your children in the classroom, I think it's so helpful to begin with. So anyway, so I had a relationship with the children. They knew who I was. I'd been there for a whole semester reading to them every week, and the teacher and I were talking early in the second semester about their tests were going to be starting in the spring, and I asked the teacher if she'd let me do some relaxation exercises with them. So that's what we would call it is relaxation because so many schools or places think meditation is something over the top. Where it's not, it's just a way to learn to relax and have more focus. So I've been coming to the meditations with Anna for a long time and uh, I began just doing some very simple things with them that I'd learned here. For example, to watch their breath. And we would do some breathing and a lot of times maybe I'd ask them to put their hands on their heart and they would breathe that way. So every week we'd only do it for five or ten minutes. And each week I'd do something different. Like we might do a silent walk around the classroom. Or I'd have them lie down and I would lead them through a little visualization, real, real, real short, you know, maybe like to look at the sky or think about water and put their hands on their heart and start breathing. Well, a lot of them couldn't stay still, but that's okay. And then some of them would go to sleep and that was okay too, but we're just talking minutes, but they had that opportunity. And then I would talk to them about nature, about going out into nature and looking at the birds and listening to the wind. And uh, one little girl, in fact, that I was with last year, I still see her this year just because I'll go have lunch with them, and she said that she has learned that when she gets upset that she just goes outside and walks around in her yard mm. and settles herself down. But she's real conscious of trying to calm herself down, so she has a real understanding just at seven years old about what that's all about. So this year, so we, the teacher asked me really right as school started, let's get started right now on these relaxation exercises. So I've got a whole new group, but I've made some individual contacts with several children because I was asked to work with them individually. So I've got some of them that already know me and feel comfortable with me. And then so I've started reading to them again. And I started reading, uh, I came to the library and found a book about Johnny Appleseed and started reading to them for several weeks about Johnny Appleseed and how he walked barefoot from Massachusetts to Ohio and had these apple seeds and started growing trees and that he was, uh, a barefoot was one of the keys, you know, that he was walking on the earth. And just in this book, it said Johnny Appleseed had a relationship with the animals and the trees. And there, and one of them, the children said, well, what does that mean, you know, have, about a relationship with the trees and the animals? So we talked about that, about there were times when people understood that uh, 
they could be in relationship with nature. And I think that's one reason meditation is so good for all of us, is because it takes us back to remembering uh, our connection with nature and how nature can be still or it can be busy and things grow and they die and then new, new flowers come. So anyway, and then I started bringing apples to school once a month and I would have them, well I talked to them about, and you all could do this so simply, uh, about cutting the apple open and there being a star inside the apple that the trees make. So we would look at that and they would eat their apples and maybe I'd read them some more about Johnny Appleseed. But I felt like that was meditation too, when they were being focused and listening to me. So um, even though all along we're still at different times doing walking meditation where they're silent and they're conscious of their feet touching the floor. Uh, but back to nature. So uh, then the next time I brought the apples, I told them I wanted them to really look at their apple and be silent and study their apple and feel their apple and smell their apple and look at the color before they bought in, bit into it. And then when they bit into it, to taste the apple and feel what it felt like and be conscious of chewing the apple. So that's a meditation in itself. So last week, it was apple time again. I do it once a month. And so they were just really into their apples. And now they're already talking about the apple seeds and real conscious that this apple time is important. And I talked to them about these seeds could be planted just like seeds were planted in them for all different reasons. Anna taught me that one. And uh, that they could try to plant their apple seeds, but that they were having an opportunity learning all these different things about nature. And then I, we, we, I would have them be real still and like pretend like you're a cat and feel like what cats, how still they are. Or think about being a flower. And I think one of the next things I'm going to do, maybe around Valentine, is take a bunch of roses and give them each a rose and have them look at the rose and see what that's all about. I'm, and again, I just think nature has so many things to teach us. But they're very responsive and they like me, which is good. So I think the connection with the children is what's most important. But I think just them being seen for who they are and being heard for who they are and you know interrupting me when I'm reading and come out with these little zingers that they have to say which are so important um, you know or just being in the room with somebody who has meditated you know who has taken some time to get quiet and still because their teacher always says I don't have the time to mm -hmm. uh, talk to them about the things you talk to them about because I know all the teachers, all of you are having, you're on a schedule, you've got these tests, they've got to learn these conjunctions or this math problem. So um, even the teacher in the first grade has come to this meditation class we have here at the library. She'll be back, but it's a possibility and there's all sorts of stuff online. I mean, Anna's got it with her ideas when she, about the dogs and the children, so you can get some more ideas about children and presence. But it's just to be quiet. And somebody just left and said that they'd read an article in the Huffington Post where the schools, a public school somewhere, is ringing a bell twice a day and just asking the children to clear their minds for just seconds and then getting right back on it. So that's what I do with my kids too, is just be quiet and let's just be still, and let's just listen to the stillness. So, wow. Thank um, anyway, you. Anyway, that's a beginning. That's a lot, and one of the things I love you're saying is the important part of that connection where you really see and listen to the children and they feel seen and heard and all of your ideas. I was thinking as you were talking, these are things parents could do mm -hmm. with their children too. Mm -hmm. If there's no volunteer in their child's class, and what a nice thing that families could do together. Mm -hmm. Thank you for all that you're doing for all those mm -hmm. children. It makes me so happy. Mm -hmm. And so I know we'll talk some more, but thank you you're for welcome. sharing with us 
and go to our CompassionWorksForAll.org videos and website and watch all of our videos. You'll see um, Debbie talking about her friend um, that played the violin. Oh, Carson. Carson mm -hmm. on their videos. So thank you for talking to us today. Okay. We'll see you soon. Okay. Bye. Bye.